CBT News, the voice of the retail automotive industry. Good morning, everyone. Jim Fitzpatrick with CBT News. Thanks so much for joining us today. What separates one service department from the next? Well, some say that maybe the service technicians and the work that they do. Today, we'll learn about a training program Krista Collins, service manager at Planet Subaru, wrote for her technicians and also some of the best practices in her service department from her perspective. Thank you, Krista, so much for joining us today. Hi, good morning, Jim. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I want to say on the outset, congratulations on your uh, 40 under 40 in automotive news. That's a pretty cool honor. It was. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's great. So uh, tell me a little bit about before we get started on sure. some of the things that you're some of the neat things you're doing there at uh, Planet Subaru. Um, tell me a little bit about your journey. You know, as I mentioned before, we got uh, recording today. Um, I can count on one hand the number of female service managers that I have interviewed here at CBT yeah. News over the course of the last nine years. So tell me a little bit about your journey and how you got into the business. Um, I have to say it definitely wasn't planned. Um, I definitely came into this business unknowing of the actual career path that was an option for me here. Um, I started base level, just coming in as um, getting coffee, filing, things of that nature. A friend of mine actually worked here and recruited me. And at the time I told her, yeah, no problem. It's just temporary though, right? Um, just <laughs> no big deal, trying to help her out. Um, right. So yeah, from there, it, it just sort of I developed relationships here. I really like the people and the atmosphere, and I obviously knew someone who had worked here, um, and then just gradually moved up from there. Um, taking on more roles, I then became a service advisor for a short period of time, well, before that, an assistant to that, and then um, I worked in the shop primarily as a dispatcher for about six years, which actually helped me quite a bit, because um, yeah. I wasn't a car person by any means. I don't, you know, right. I wasn't really into that sort of thing. It was right. the planet that really threw me in, but I've learned a lot through the years, and the, the guys have been very patient with me and ladies um, in teaching me things to pick up a few things here and there. Sure. And then um, from there, they promoted me to this position about four years ago now. That is so cool. So uh, how long from the time you entered the industry to the time that they said, okay, you're the service manager? So that would be about 11 years. I've been here 15. 11 years. Wow, that's mm -hmm. fantastic. And <laughs> kudos to you for being in the industry, or I should say being in the dealership for 15 years. You know, the turnover, mm -hmm. as you know, is so high in our industry. We're always trying to yeah. get our arms around that. But uh, but it sounds like you're not going to cover off the ball. You know, all aspects of the service department, which is great. Because so many I'm times, many you hats, know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that and that really helps, doesn't it, to run the service Absolutely. department? Absolutely. And and you uh, you actually, with my staff. yeah, and you have the respect of your staff and the admiration because of the fact that you have spent you know so much time in each one of those areas, service writer and and uh, you know as a as a uh, parts or a, I would just say as a dispatcher and such. I mean that that accounts mm -hmm. for a lot. So. Absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. It's so, definitely helped. Yeah, so I can give my sort of opinion on really aspects of everything. I've even helped in the recon department here and there. So yeah. I've done literally all of it. Wow, that, that's <laughs> fantastic. So there's probably not a job that you're uh, hiring for that you don't know pretty intimately, right? Yeah, I think I, yeah, I have a pretty good <laughs> grasp on everything from lot management to our, our sure. extensive fleet of loaners. Um, phones, whatever you need, yeah, sure. basically in the shop. I even picked up a few tricks in the shop as well. Yeah. <laughs> Before we get into the next uh, segment here uh, of mm -hmm. this interview, uh, now that we're on this, what is your career path? Where would you like to be? If I, if we had this interview in five years, are you the, are you a GM or a GSM or a dealer principal or where do you see this going? Uh, well, where I really like to go with it is focusing on what we created here with Planet U and, and sort of incorporating. We do have another sister dealership, um, mm -hmm. a Chrysler Jeep store, okay. um, who's trying to get their feet in in the same way with um, hiring more diverse um, group of people with women and things, people like that. Um, so I did want to expand that and try to grow that part of the program and make that sort of mainstream. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, I mm -hmm. want to get into that now. So you wrote for Planet Subaru's uh, an apprenticeship. Uh, training program called Planet U, which is which is kind of cool. Tell us about that and and what the response has been. Well, it stemmed from really like a a, a lack of talent out in the field and trying to recruit um, auto technicians with the skill level that we needed. Um, and what we were getting wasn't really what we wanted per se. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately, a lot of people have been jaded by the deal dealership yeah. experience. Sure. So they came with a certain amount of baggage. Um, so what it really stemmed from that is trying to grow our own um, and basically teaching them our ways and how we like to do things. And so that's where it started. Um, and then it also did really open up the hiring pool quite a bit because we had opened up to people who would have not who would have been overlooked for this type of um, career initially without the experience usually required. Yeah. 
Uh, so by doing that, we've opened it up to women and all different types of minorities, everyone involved, and just basically putting that language out there that please, yes, come in, we'll take anything, and then we're willing to train. And then so we've set up a program where we have a mentorship program in the shop, the apprentice text with our flat rate season vets, and basically have also a curriculum that coincides with that. So there's online training and things, obviously, doing the manufacturer, but we've kind of structured our own way of doing things as well to bring them up through the ranks the way we, the way we like it. That's great. I, I know in the, uh, I was reading in the, in the Automotive News article where you said that uh, not only do you prefer candidates who have never worked in the uh, new car dealership environment, but you also look for those that didn't even plan to, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, a lot of it just there was an interest and it wasn't necessarily that one people work on cars. A lot of it just because they like the planet and what we do here and what we represent. Um, that's really what the draw has been. And a lot of stuff can be taught. Obviously, there should be some level of aptitude. Um, and then in some cases where it didn't work out, we've actually retained a lot of those people and they've actually gone on to work in other areas of the dealership, whether in um, parts department, we've actually had someone move on to there and actually to sales. So if they didn't work out in that situation, we try to keep them here either way, just as part of the family. That, that is so cool. And uh, what issues uh, are, are facing service departments in terms of customer acquisition and retention? That's something that service departments and sales, I mean, I should say, and, and dealers are are always, you know, trying to get their hands around, right? Is the is the yeah. keeping the customers once they've sold the, sold the car, they come into service to to continually bring them back to the service drive, which is tough, right? So with us, it's really trying to meet that level of expectation we put out there as the un dealership. We mm-hmm. really try to provide an alternate experience to a typical dealership um, by creating a divide a diverse of work culture and people. The things we represent as far as our keeping a limited impact on the environment and things of that nature. And people want to do business with people who have those type of ideals. Yeah, So that's sure. really been a key factor in um, right. getting customers, retaining them. Um, we also have service programs set up where if they decide to continue their services here with us, we do have a sort of incentive program where we have um, loaner cars and things of that nature, uh, tires and battery replacements for the life of the car. We yeah. extend the powertrain promise um, and then free car washes, things of that nature. Um, and then, as they kind of get to know us and know how we do things here, it's not uncommon for us to get sort of families of Subaru owners. So their kids end up getting the hand-me-downs, the parents get the new ones, and then we've got the whole fleet. So yeah, yeah. It's really been helpful over the years to have that type sure. of thing. It probably doesn't hurt that you're, you know, you're in the Subaru business because Subaru uh, well, owners, yeah. as you know, it's almost like a mm-hmm. cult or, or this huge family it is, where yeah, the, the loyalty. The love promise. Yeah, the yes. loyalty is just incredible to the brand and and really to the dealer as well. That if they're going to have any work done, they're bringing it back to the Subaru dealer because they don't want the you know the grease monkey over at uh, Walmart <laughs> you know to change their oil or whatever. It's not, that's not good enough for their Subaru. It's it's kind of their baby, right? Yeah. It is definitely always been a cult thing. It's changed through the years because we have actually become more popular, so we're yeah. getting all kinds. I don't really right. know Subarus for what they started, um, but still, we're always willing to teach and. Um, get those people just, you know, to love them as much as we do. Sure. Hey, during the uh, pandemic, switching gears a little bit, did you have to lay anybody off in the service department? Talk to me about that. Uh, We didn't lay anyone. We had to furlough some people. So the sales department initially was the first to go because as essential workers, they weren't deemed essential in the first phase. Right. um, Which actually allowed us to implement a lot of the changes we had to make service-wise because we had the extra space and the people that were here. So that was helpful at that time. And they got creative in their sales uh, approach there as well. Yeah. Um, but we just, yeah, only had a furlough. We didn't actually have to let anyone go. We were oh, that's great. Um, happy that's great. that we can keep. Everybody's back on now? On. Everyone's back, yeah. Yeah, that's great. And business is uh, booming right now? Or where, where does business stand? I know a lot of dealerships. It is have... actually, we've definitely bounced back. We had a little lull during the initial shutdown. The sure. shock of sort of everything obviously put everyone and step back a little bit. Um, but right. it, it enabled us to allow to kind of reevaluate how we do from here and sort of streamline mm-hmm. some of our processes. And um, we've been busier than ever. Um, after that initial kind of shock back in March, um, it literally started picking up immediately right, right back up in April. And we're basically back to pre-COVID numbers as we speak right now. That is that is fantastic. It isn't amazing how mm-hmm. you can have a national pandemic and everybody's know. you know <laughs> locked down in their homes for you know six weeks or two months. and. And then all of a sudden we're, you know, as Americans, we just go, oh, that, yeah, we'll put our mask on and our gloves or whatever, and we're right back at it. Adaptable, so that's what we need to be here. Yeah. (laughs) Talk to me about some of the best practices uh, dealers can use when incorporating fixed operations into their digital strategy. Well, for us, we're a little old school, I gotta say. So we're still working with that ourselves. We literally just got rid of our paper um, 
appointment schedule two years ago. We literally <laughs> still had it written down. Yeah. Um, just because we like that connection, we don't like anything else interfering on how, our process and how we do things. So sure. um, first thing we had to do was throw that out, and then we updated our <laughs> operating system. Big move. Uh, we obviously do use the manufacturer and stuff as far as with the online appointments, and that helps streamline the process as yeah. well. Um, but a lot of it, we it's a lot of word of mouth for us. Um, we do have our web page and Facebook presence, um, but word of mouth is now translating to online reviews. So that's really um, something we pay a lot of attention to and keep up with that to keep our online presence. Yeah, we, we live in a in a review world, don't we? I mean, if, if yes. you're not, if your customer drives out of right? that service, yeah, if they pick up that car and it's not right the first time, oh, well, they're, no. they're already <laughs> working their thumbs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's so we're crazy. We're always conscious of that and try to reach out to people and, you know, if we make a mistake, we can own up to it, but obviously we like to fix perceptions to some things. You know, there's a lot of tension added to the way things are going right now in the world, so that can play into it sometimes. So we're always trying right. to be conscious of that too. Sure, sure. How do we get more females like Krista Collins in the retail automotive business, whether it be in service <sighs> or sales or or wherever? I mean, we do, we need more good females, right? The, the industry, um, I think, suffers from that. Just ask. But, what's just that? Let, let, let the opportunity be there, so just ask. Yeah. People just don't even know the opportunities are out there. We put the language out there to try to draw these women in and they yeah. just need the opportunity. And once that's given, they'll take over. Sure, sure. Um, some of the uh, other female dealers that I've spoken to about that very issue, they'll say, well, we've got to change a little bit in the sense that we have to be more family friendly. You know, if in the event Absolutely. that, uh, you know, a mom wants to go see her uh, son or daughter in a recital or a soccer game or you know, this or that, then we've got to accommodate for that. And as one dealer said, we got to have to do that for the men in the industry. I mean, the industry yeah. just has to change uh, the way that they view their their employees and in, in, uh, in terms of a work-life balance. Also on a compensation mm -hmm. side to have something a little bit more steady rather than, you know, well, if you didn't sell that much, you're not going to make that much and, you know, so be yeah. it. It's, it's tough to set up a family budget based on that, right? Yeah, it's a, it is difficult. Um, my struggles through the year, obviously with childcare and things of that nature, has always been a battle. I've had a lot of support in and outside of this dealership. And sure. we, we take the um, home and work life balance very seriously here. And a lot of us put in a lot of time to make that happen now. Like I've put in many years and hours of stuff that I've gotten, unfortunately had to miss. But um, what we've done a lot with our scheduling here has changed it. Um, we have uh, four 10 hour days. So there's actually a couple extra days off during the week, which sort of helps with That's alleviating cool. some of that cost, which actually helps yeah. a lot of families to balance that out. Um, and things of that nature. So that's helped me personally um, with our, I have two children as well. So full-time working mother, yeah. we need, we need all you, the help we can get. And did you have the children while you were, while you were employed there? Yeah, I have a three-year-old and a nine-year-old. Great, and so mm -hmm. you, they gave you ample time off to have your kids and absolutely. and spend some time yeah, with them, uh, you know, when they're They've infants and flexible. such, right? And we always try to be conscious of people's lives outside of here because it's just as important. You need to have your head straight to do your best work here. So That's we right. gotta help each other out. That's right. Wow, that that is fantastic. So, wh what do you see for the future of the industry? What are the things that you're a service manager of a you know of a good size dealership there in Massachusetts? A uh, great brand, as we as we were saying before we got rolling here, to have a Subaru dealership in Massachusetts is uh, that that's what that's what you want, right? Um, yeah, but having absolutely. said that, what are the things that uh, other than your children? What are the things that keep you up at night about the about the industry and and what might come down the pike? Um, well, with us, we're really small and we're getting big really fast. So we just want to keep that level of service up to par with mm -hmm. that. We don't want anything to to lose itself in you know reminiscence of our growth. Sure. So that's something we're really conscious of and getting the right kind of people and recruiting. We're still hiring during this whole process. We've been hiring throughout the pandemic and just trying to get our team strong to sort of take over this sure. headwind of what's coming because sure. you know the growth are expected sure. to grow. Uh, the parts and sales are expected to double in the next couple of years. So we need to be ready for that. Wow, that, that is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, hey, did you ever have those challenges as a, as a female, as a manager? You're probably managing predominantly men, right? Technicians mm -hmm. and service writers and such. And I don't, know, I don't know what the makeup 15, is there. What's that? So we've got 26 right now and six of them are females. So okay. yeah, there's a good chunk of yeah, good, male good. dominance out there. <laughs> but do you ever get that time that you think, wow, you know, he's, he's treating me like this because I'm a female. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't deserve that. Honestly, no, I've never run into it. There was one time back in the day early as a dispatcher when okay. I was still learning the ropes and things like that. Yeah. And I had a, we'll say a disagreement with someone, but um, <laughs> there were people there to back me up and there yeah. always has been. So that's yeah. <laughs> and now that your manager, he's gone. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> but, uh, 
No, that, that, this has been great. Uh, Krista Collins, 40 Under 40, uh, Automotive News. That's quite an honor. And uh, do, knocking the cover off the balls, a service manager at Planet Subaru in Massachusetts. I want to thank you so much for joining us uh, here on CBT News. Hopefully we can give you a shout back and do a follow-up to see how things are moving along. Congratulations on all your success. Thank you so much. That'd be great. It was great being on. Thank you for having me. Great. Thank you. Thanks for watching CBT News, the voice of the retail automotive industry. CBT Automotive Network is a part of the JBF Business Media family.